Today we're going to be looking at a quick tip on how to improve your modeling skills in Blender. Now this already assumes that you know how to use the interface in Blender. However, if you're looking to learn the interface of Blender, I actually have some courses and some free resources on that, which I'll discuss at the end of this video. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. There are a lot of great modeling resources out there. And a lot of times when I see like a character creation workflow, it ends up being like a nine hour video course going through the whole process. And those are incredibly detailed and helpful. However, I'm more of a hands-on learner and I always have a hard time kind of following along with the video. Now, originally I began in a 2D background learning how to draw. And one thing they teach you in drawing is to grab photographs or other artists' works and to kind of trace over it with primitive shapes and to kind of get an idea of their proportions and their anatomy by kind of tracing over this artwork. Now, by no means should you trace somebody else's artwork and claim it as your own and upload it, but it's a good way to learn if you're just trying to get down some kind of the basic gestural figuring and understanding what works in the artwork. We can actually do something quite similar in the 3D viewport with a couple settings. Just a bit of a disclaimer right up front, you should not use this to copy other people's artwork. That's not good, and you shouldn't do this and upload it as your own by only tweaking one or two things. What you should do is use this as an opportunity to kind of start from scratch and figure out how other people are achieving the typology or the proportions or styles that you're interested in learning yourself. Once you've done this a couple times, you should take the techniques that you've learned and then apply it to your own artwork starting from scratch. This isn't something you can rely on long term. This is something you kind of do in the beginning a few times when you're trying to kind of figure out how to do something. For example, this was really helpful for me in the beginning, learning how to get topology around things like the shoulders and the face and how they have edge flows and the poles. This was a great way to kind of learn hands on. With that disclaimer up front, let's dive in and look at how you can do this in your own viewport. A bit about our sponsor. Are you looking to level up your 3D skills? Then a great place to look is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my bringing illustration to life with 3D class, I'll walk you through the process of converting your illustrations to 3D. We'll walk through creating this scene, including the use of the grease pencil, a universal material, and other simple conversion methods. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. This technique is not intended to replace watching videos or reading books on good topology, edge flow, how to use poles, edge loops, or just any anatomy. What this is good for is after you've indulged in that learning content, learning how to put it into practice. So if you're like me, I had a good understanding of edge loops. I had a good understanding of how to use a pole, how to use a target, how to adapt my topology but I had a hard time putting it in practice on actual characters. So kind of using this as a hands-on learning experience helped me learn how to apply some of those techniques and that knowledge when I was actually modeling. So let's get started. So here's a character I created in my Skillshare course, and let's go ahead and turn on the wireframe for a moment. So let's say that you see my topology here and you're kind of having trouble getting something similar to this in your own setup. So you want to kind of trace over it to get an idea of how maybe I came to this end result. Well, it's actually quite simple, but it takes a couple steps. So first of all, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to turn off the wireframe here. So what we're going to do is make this almost traceable like an overlay. So first, what we're going to do is switch to solid view here. Then I'm going to grab the frog here and we're going to go ahead and delete all materials on it. So we're just going to go ahead and delete those two. And then we're going to create two new slots. What I'm going to do is create one material and we'll just call this one white. And then I'm going to create another material and we're just going to call this one black. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come into the settings here and change this one to a black material. And then that'll just give us kind of a white and black representation there. So we're going to twirl up the surface settings here. Then we're going to twirl down the viewport display, which will give us a couple options there. So let's go ahead and click white here. And we're going to leave that one as white. And what we're going to do is click this. And we're going to set the alpha here, which will make this transparent in the viewport. So if I go ahead and take this alpha and turn it down, you'll see that that becomes transparent. So let's go ahead and set this to something really low 
like 0.1, maybe even lower 0.05. And that'll just give us a slightly transparent view of the character. Now let's come down to the black. What we're going to do here is we're going to set the viewport display color to black. And then we're going to take this alpha and let's set this to something like 0.15. That'll just give us kind of 15%. Now what we're going to do is grab our object here, and then we're going to grab a wrench, and then we're going to grab a modifier here, and we're going to turn on a wireframe modifier. Now I have a subdivision surface here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that so that we can kind of see our original wireframe. And you can see here that everything's quite thick, and we're gonna change a couple settings here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this material offset, I'm going to turn this to one, and you'll see that that changed it to a black wireframe with a 15% opacity. Next, I'm gonna lower this thickness by quite a bit. You can set this to whatever you like. I found that if I did 0 0.0025, that, that gave me pretty thin but visible wireframe. So now we have our wireframe there. So if we go ahead and add another object, so let's say that we start a cube here, we'll be able to see that the wireframe is see-through if we move this back here and I come back to the front view, we can see that we can see through our wireframe onto our object there. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that for now. But what we want is for this to always appear in front of our object. So what I'm gonna do is tab into the front view there, and I'm gonna select our object. I'm gonna come up here to the Object Properties tab. Then I'm gonna come down here to the Viewport Display, twirl that down, and we're going to check in front, and we're gonna turn off shadow. So now, wherever we rotate, this will always be in front so that we have it as a reference. Now, if you want, you can adjust this to be even lower. So if we come back to the material settings, you can click that and lower this alpha to maybe something like 0.1, and that'll make it even slightly less visible. You can adjust those numbers until you get something that you're happy with. Lastly, what we're gonna do is turn off selectability for this frog because we don't want it getting in the way of us modeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here and grab the frog collection, and I have my selection toggle on. If you don't see that little arrow, what you can do is click up here on the filter and check this so that it's blue. Now, if I click this, I won't be able to select anything in that scene selection, and I can just go ahead and name this as frog ref. And now I have a representation of a model here that I can go through and begin kind of mimicking. So if I wanted to do traditional box modeling, I could go ahead and grab this cube here, grab the modifier, add a subdivision surface, just scale this up a bit, maybe add another subdivision there. And then after that, I could begin kind of trying to mimic the structure of this model. And this is like a really great way for kind of learning how people achieve topology. It can be difficult looking at a final result and it can be difficult trying to follow along with a video exactly. Sometimes it's easier just to hop in there and kind of learn hands-on yourself. Now, again, as I said at the beginning of the video, you shouldn't rely on this long-term. This is to kind of help you learn a couple things. This was great for me learning how to model hands, how to figure out kind of shoulder topology and things like that. You're still going to have to have an understanding of topology. So a lot of those videos are great because they explain topology flow and poles and other things like that. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was going to offer some modeling resources. Now, first of all, in order for this to really be beneficial to you, you have to have a good understanding of topology and Blender's editing tools. Now, I've linked some free resources down below from some other people that I believe have some great topology videos and also some good kind of editing videos and resource videos. If you're interested in checking out my work, I have some courses on Skillshare that dive into this very thing. First of all, I have a Getting Started with Blender course, which walks you through opening the program and getting familiar with the interface for the first time. I have a first character course, which will walk you through kind of modeling your first character and some of the basics of object mode and edit mode. And then most recently, I just released a new course, which is called kind of introductory to kind of modeling in Blender. And what this does is it's more of an intermediate to advanced kind of deep dive into the modeling tools of Blender. And we'll be modeling a character together in this course. Make sure to tag me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram so I can see everything that you make. Thanks for watching.